What about you and welcome to another Whiskey Review with me, the Whiskey Novice. Thank you for joining me for review number 245, the penultimate, penultimate episode of a series of 12-year-old Scottish single malts. 13 12-year-old Scottish single malts. The Baker's Dozen. Will this be the end of this series, uh, me series of 12-year-old? We'll, we'll talk about that in the next review, shall we, when it is the end of the series of 12-year-old Scottish single malts. For now, the penultimate episode and we are back in Speyside looking at Glen Farkless, the Glen Farkless 12 year old. Glen Farkless, a distillery that I uh, maybe don't say it an awful lot, but there's something about, well, there's there's a lot going on in Glen Farkless. And here's what it is tradition. Tradition underlined. That's what Glen Farkless is to me. Scotch whiskey production. Tradition. John Grant, not the Grants of uh, Glenfiddich and, and etc. Different Grants. This has been a privately owned distillery for generations, and I applaud that. Uh, if you ever visit the distillery, beautiful place, beautiful people, uh, very traditional once again. Dunnage warehousing being used. Uh, apl I applaud that very much. So, it's it's hard not to. So this 12 year old is, uh, it, it, it was actually a, a travel exclusive. It was a travel retail exclusive for a long time. And, and it has now uh, crept its way into their, their core range. It has been for a while, but you know, it's, it's part of their core range. Bottled at 43%, chill filtered, yes, but natural color. Uh, so once again, you know, there's a, there's a lot to be said for that and that we, I think, and this isn't me just backing them up and saying everything that they do is fantastic, but I think there's a there's too much, almost too much now nowadays, uh, of of this necessity for stronger whiskey for cask strength, and even it must be forty six percent, otherwise I won't rate it. If it works at forty three, if it works at forty percent, fair enough, fair enough. There's nothing wrong with that. So. With all that said, what's the whiskey like? I've glorified them here, but what's the whiskey like? Mmm. It's it's clean. This one, now, I'll, I'll, I'll lay this out here now. 12 years old, fully matured in all the so sherry casks. However, it's not a sherry bomb by any means. I would suggest that the casks they're using are probably sack and fill or I don't know. I don't know. Because I mean, e even the color of them, if those were wet or fresher casks, I would imagine that would be darker. If you look at the likes of the Edred or 12 year old or 10 year old, sorry, as a good example, it's so dark and that's 10 years all or so. So the fact that this is 12 years all or so and it's that bit lighter, I would suggest it's it's sack and fill probably casks. But it's rich, round sweetness. There is darker notes, but it's a dark chocolate. And this is the thing. I was actually highly surprised when I seen that this had spent all 12 years in XL Rosso casks. Because there's a lovely toffee note in the nose of this. Lovely, real rich toffee note which would have suggested that they were actually using good bourbon casks. But there's no bourbon casks in use at all here. So a real, real good, rich toffee caramel note. Yeah, there's this, there's so much caramel going on in there. It would really suggest that there's there, there's been bourbon, ex-bourbon casks used at some point, but no. Nope. Loads loads and loads of honey and i would go one step further and say manuka honey it's a richer honey and malt there's a great malty note the whole time in the background brown sugar it's it's not as i've already mentioned not a sherry bomb as as we would consider a sherry bomb what we would usually consider a sherry bomb but it is still an incredibly solid nose so into the palate. So 
soft once again, but a better sweet arrival. Mm, this is all all about the honey for me, and that manuka honey, which is a, it's that rich or slightly bitter thing going on. Yeah, it's even a weird, there's a weird funky sort of element I always find to Manuka honey, and it's here. Like the nose, not a big sherry bomb. All about those honey notes. Brown sugar again, caramel again, toffee, rich toffee. Yeah. It's it's solid, very a very solid malt, and forty three percent. I would even say this punches above that because it's rich enough, it's thick enough on the palate. It was a bit soft and light in the first couple of sips, but that soon builds up, and it's all about that honey. With all of those other flavors playing their part, but they they play second fiddle. For me to the honey the honey comes first finish finish is sort of yeah, medium to short but it's nice there's a nice uh creamy peppery memory of that maltiness and honey still in the back it's not hot it's just nice. It's just very well balanced, very well made. Yet again, you, you almost get that feel of it being very traditionally made. It's got that, uh, I, I do mention it every now and again, that feel of what I would say an old-fashioned Scotch whiskey. And when I say that, an old-fashioned Scotch whiskey, I mean the way it was being produced for years, which is what they've been doing here. Uh, distilling doesn't really change technically and that, that I mean we're still working on the basics wash distilled twice three times whatever to make a stronger spirit copper contact etc etc how you do that changes from distillery to distillery whether it be steam pipes direct fire etc not too many direct firing I believe Glen Farkas still do some direct firing uh, it's, there's not too many doing it and what you're doing is you're caramelizing that spirit a little in those stills it's i think it's a thing of beauty it's back to uh it's back to the thing of beauty that it always was and that's what these guys are doing they're, they're keeping it traditional are they actively trying to keep it traditional i don't know uh, or or is it just them saying it's not broke so we don't need to fix it. Let's just keep working away with what we're doing and they're making a good product. Uh, this is a good solid whiskey. When you step up to the 15, you take a, a, a huge step up. The 10 year old's a bit, mm, bit wishy-washy. The 105, I've traditionally never been a big fan of. I find there's too much sulfur going on in the 105. It is a big sherry bomb. But when you step up their, their older age statements, that just becomes bigger, fuller. The ABV usually goes up on them. So. You know, there's, they are making better whiskies than this, but this is a good entry point. This is around that's around the fifty to sixty pounds mark. But that to me is the limit on a twelve-year-old whiskey. A twelve-year-old malt to me should not be any dearer than sixty pound. There's no justification for a twelve-year-old malt to be any dearer than sixty pounds, because if these guys are doing it at that price. This guy's doing that, that guy's, these, you know, there's so, so many great 12-year-old single malts in the market. Okay, okay, I will put a little addition to that and say cask strength, maybe. Push it a little, but 65 at that point, no justification for running into the hundreds. Drop of water, bright, honeyed. Very easy going. This is a good bright nose. Palette, soft, honeyed, very easy going. Do you know, it becomes one of those whiskies. I 
in that arena of toffee, sweet, honey, sweet. Uh, you know, you're getting your sweetness from a, a different product, be it toffee, be it honey, be it summer. You know, that's where your sweetness is coming from. It's not an offensive, sharp sweetness. It's a, it's a nice round. Everything plays well together. This whiskey would do you. Honestly, it, it, it is actually genuinely that good. It's it's a good box ticking whiskey where you could say, you know, it does this, it does that, it does that, it does that. Why do I need another whiskey? We're all a bit, you know, let's try this and let's try. We, we all like to move around in our whiskeys and there's no harm in that. But this is a this is actually a very good solid. This one would do me. It really is. Everything is so easy going about it. It doesn't try to be anything it isn't. I really like it. Very fond of it. Well done, Glenn Farkless. <clears throat> it's just right. It's just right. It's, it's another one of those very much a space cider that I can't fault. Of course, if it was £10 cheaper, brilliant. If it was 46%, non-chill filtered, I don't know. Because I just don't, because we can't find out. We don't know. So we got to work sometimes with what we've got. And I think this is a good one. So how would I, or what would I suggest as an alternative? Well, if this is your thing, I'm not stepping too far outside of the box by suggesting this. Glenn Goyne, 12 year old. 43%. Uh, is it natural colour and non chill filter? I can't remember. And my eyesight just does not allow for um, that sort of thing anymore. But uh, very fairly similar. You know, they are actually fairly similar. So it's, it's sometimes I do, I set this up for myself and I go, I'm not really offering an alternative here. I'm actually offering you up much the same whiskey from somebody else. But, and I'm sure once again, and I say this quite a lot, you people who are watching this review know, there's a lot of you out there know more about whiskey than I do. So I imagine most of you who are trying Glen Fartless 12 year old for the first time have tried Glen going 12 year old in the past. But it's just, um, you know, for a newcomer, shall we say, you tried Glen Fartless 12 year old and you liked it. What could I offer up as an alternative? Glen Goyne 12 year old, and it's probably a bit cheaper. I forgot to check, but I imagine the Glen Goyne 12 year old comes in a little cheaper. So if you're looking for a slight, there we go, we'll put it out. That, that That's what I offer up to you if you're looking for a slightly cheaper alternative, which is. On a par, I would suggest maybe the Glen Farkless 12 year old just pips it a bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say, yeah, the Glen Farkless 12 year old does pip it. It's a better palette in the Glen Farkless 12 year old than there is in the Glen Going 12 year old. There. Heart on sleeve. Done. So there you go. Yep. If you could get it at a better price than 50 to 60 pounds, I would recommend it. Uh, will I replace it? There's the thing. Will I replace it? Probably not. Why? Oh, you well, you were raving about it, Jim, but you wouldn't you wouldn't buy another one. Because this'll last me a while. And it's a sort of one and done whiskey. It's good. Don't get me wrong, it, it is good. But it's still a sort of one and done. It's not really something I would replace it. If I was going to replace it with anything, I'll step up the ages in Glen Farkless and try it that way. Rather than, you know, I, I did say a moment ago that, you know, oh, this one whiskey would do you. I feel like as if I'm going back a bit on that. But I just, you know, it, it's good. But I mean, so many whiskeys out there. That... Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Say thank you very much for joining me. Uh, always a pleasure. Thank you very, very much to my patrons. Should anybody wish to join that group, the details are in the video description below. I will be back next time with one more 12-year-old Scottish single malt to finish off the series. Oh, and it'll be a doozy, I'm sure. Until then, look after yourselves and here's to your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.